How it's made, solar panels. Solar panels are something that climate conscious cities and towns have made almost abundant and popular. The energy from the sun is bountiful and it makes sense that we have to develop methods to harness this large amount of energy. The earth actually receives approximately 25 times more power from the sun than we use in the world every day. Solar energy's contribution to the use of our energy has grown significantly in the last couple of decades. However, how are solar panels made? Welcome back to our channel How It's Made and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to our channel for interesting topics like this. Let's find out how solar panels are made. The science behind solar panels. The whole basis of making solar panels is by using a super abundant material that we see on Earth. Can you guess what it is? It is sand. Sand is abundant in silicon and it has to be purified to about 99.999% purity. There is a very complex purification process to do this. If you were to look into the structure of the silicon molecule, you would see that the atoms are bound together where the electrons in the structure can't move. Only if enough energy strikes the silicon can the electrons move. This is how a semiconductor material works. However, when the sun strikes, the movement of the particles is random and there is no current through the load. So, you need a driving force to ensure the unidirectional flow of electrons. Boron is often infused into pure silicon to create holes for the particles to move towards. This makes sure some electrons would migrate into this positively charged region and fill the holes available there. Because of electron migration, the boundary of the negative side becomes mildly positively charged, whereas the positive side becomes mildly negatively charged. Fundamental physics tells us that an electric field will form between these charges and this produces the necessary driving force to move the electrons in a particular direction. In a practical solar cell, the top layer is very thin and abundant with electrons, whereas the bottom layer is a lot thicker. Solar cells are constructed in this particular way as it results in the generation of more current. The top thin layer also makes it more easy for sunlight to penetrate through. How are solar panels made? A solar panel has several layers. One of them is a layer of cells connected in series through copper strips and it is what you often see immediately when looking at a solar panel. Another layer is a layer of EVA sheeting on each side of the cells to protect them from dirt, humidity, vibrations and shocks to protect these light sensitive sheets. Step 1. Obtaining pure silicon and making the wafers. The procedure to purify silicon from sand involves mixing carbon with it and applying high temperatures of up to 2000 degrees Celsius. You would obtain a gaseous silicon compound which is then mixed with hydrogen to get highly purified polycrystalline silicon. Scientists then change the shape of these silicon ingots and turn them into silicon wafers which are exactly like how it sounds, very thin slices of silicon. The silicon wafer is the brain and the heart of the photovoltaic cell. There are two main types of solar panels which exist, these are thin film and crystalline silicon panels. Crystalline silicon solar modules are very common and they look like black or blue rectangular grids having smaller square shaped cells and they tend to be interconnected together. There are two further types of crystalline silicon designs like monocrystalline and polycrystalline designs. Monocrystalline cells can produce high electrical conductivity but are costlier. Polycrystalline models have more impurities but are cheaper. You can recognize a monocrystalline solar cell as the crystal framework produces uniform blue color without any grain marks thus giving the highest efficiency levels and best purity. There are also thin film modules that adhere to the metal foil, plastic or glass substrates. However, they can be fragile and sometimes flexible. This can be installed in automobiles and other devices. Step 2. Producing the ingots. The pure silicon rocks obtained are melted at very high temperatures to get the ingots in cylindrical shapes. The thorough melting process makes sure that all atoms are perfectly aligned in the required structure and orientation. The boron is added to give the silicon positive electrical polarity. After cooling down the ingot, the grinding and polishing processes are done. The ingots will then have flat sides. Step 3. Constructing the wafers. The wafers are derived by slicing the silicon ingot into extremely thin disks. This process requires the use of a wire saw for extreme precision cutting. A wafer is as thin as a piece of paper, and you should remember that we'd be cutting metal to that width. As pure silicon is shiny, it can reflect the sunlight without absorbing any, which can be detrimental to energy conversion. Hence, in order to reduce the loss of sunlight, an anti-reflective coating is applied to the silicon wafer. Step 4. Making the solar cells. The wafers are converted into solar cells by individually treating them by adding metal conductors to each of their surfaces. Due to this, the wafers get the characteristic grid-like matrix on the surface. This helps in the conversion of solar energy into electricity. Also, the coating increases the absorption of sunlight and reduces the loss of sunlight by reflection. Even phosphorus is diffused in a thin layer over the surface of the wafers inside an oven-like chamber and this makes the surface get charged with a negative electrical orientation. The use of boron and phosphorus leads to the incorporation of a positive-negative junction which is important for the functioning of the solar cell. Step 5. Cell Cutting 
Using a laser cutting machine, the solar cells are cut out. Based on the wattage of the panel, the size of the cells is determined. For fuel cell modules, this step is skipped. Step 6. Stringing process. This is a fully automated process and involves joining the cells together to place them in a panel. A good quality panel employs cells of size greater than 38mm and the cells are joined together with the help of soldering. The upper side faces the sun and usually comes in blue or black. This is the negative component. The bottom side is white in color and is the positive part of the device. This is how the electric field is generated. Step 7. Adding the solar glass. Here, tempered glass is applied to the panel and this glass has a coating of ethylene vinyl acetate. This is to protect the cells from external dirt, dust or even bird poop. Step 8. Thorough visual inspection. A technical inspector inspects the cells for any fault or error during the stringing process. This is important to ensure quality. As the whole process tends to be automated, checking periodically for quality is important. Step 9. Taping and connection. In this step, a technician joins the solar cells into a matrix alignment by taping. Connections between the cells are soldered together. At the same time, any excess material is cut out and removed. This ensures the minimization of the area. Step 10. Insulating the module connection and observation. The connections are insulated by employing a backsheet and EVA encapsulation. This protects the module from dust and moisture. The module is checked for any dust particle, color mismatch and other issues. Step 11. EL testing for defects. EL testing is short for electroluminescence testing and here the solar module is scanned in an EL machine. This identifies any dead or low power cells, short circuit cells, cracks or any defects. In case the module is found to have an error, it is sent back for fixing. Step 12. The lamination process. This process is about laminating the module at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. It takes only 20 minutes and after that the modules are left for 10 to 15 minutes to cool down. Only after it cools down to reach room temperature can the next step be done. Step 13. Trimming the back sheet, frame cutting and frame punching. The excess material of the back sheet is cut and discarded. Frame cutting involves cutting out frames of various sizes for bordering the panels to ensure a perfect fit. After this, holes are made into the frame for mounting and grounding the panel to the surface. Step 14. Filling the sealant. The sealant is affixed to the solar panel to protect it and this also helps the module firmly get attached to the frame. After the frame is fixed to the module, it is sent back to the framing machine and punched into the frame permanently. Step 15. Fixing the junction box. After the sealant using process, the junction box is firmly attached to the module. After this, all the remaining connections are soldered and are kept aside for 10 to 12 hours for curing. This ensures that the setup is perfectly dry. Step 16. Final cleaning and testing. The whole panel is then wiped and connected to check its output, current, voltage and so on so that a test report is generated after following all the stipulated guidelines. An information label with all the details would be pasted on for the users. A quality control lab test is also done to check insulation resistance after which it is sent for a mechanical load test. If it clears all the tests, it will be packaged and sent for sale to various companies or wholesale merchants. And that is the journey of solar panel production. Solar panels are very beneficial for people and the environment. A solar PV module may lead to initial high investment, but after installation it can run maintenance free for many years and you can save a lot in energy bills. This addresses a lot of problems about climate change and global warming. It is surely not easy to construct your own solar panel as there are many details that can be a real engineering challenge. The basics are simple, but the details can be incredibly tricky. The combination of silicon and the complexity of design sure is a great engineering marvel. Do you know anything more about how solar energy panels are made? Do you have one installed at your own place yet? Or has your city started the installation of solar panels? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, do not forget to drop the video a like and remember to subscribe to how it's made. Also, hit that bell icon to turn on post notifications. Subscribe to our channel also for more amazing content. Stay safe science fanatics and see you real soon.